Hey everyone, Cody here, and today we're going to be doing what I call a crush painting, and this is simply where you put paint on a surface like paper or a canvas, and then you take another thing of similar size, put it over it, and crush it to kind of create two identical mirrored paintings. And I've done this a few times and they came out kind of interesting. There's another technique that I, uh, I made a painting called Beneath the Current. And what I did was I had liquid paint um, on the ground on, the sur on a flat surface and then I took the paper and I, I set the paper on it face down and then I just kind of pushed it into it and then pulled it off. And it actually made a really interesting dynamic painting that I didn't really think much of, but the painting sold uh, for hundreds of dollars. And, you know, I actually had people that actually wanted a painting like that afterwards, even though I didn't really think much of it uh, when the painting was made. So it's kind of ironic um, what people like and what they don't like. But anyway, so today we're going to do a crushed painting. I think when I get some more colors, which will actually be pretty soon, um, I will go ahead and maybe do one of those, those uh, I guess you would call them like a, a pressure painting where you kind of put them in to the paint, push into them, and then, you know, it makes the painting. Uh, now today, the colors I'll be using uh, are just varied colors. I've got an orange, blue, purple, yellow, red. I'm not going to be using black, so set that aside. Uh, but honestly, the, the reason I'm using these colors is simply because I've got them here and they're starting to dry out. So I kind of wanted to use them up, you know, if I, I may as well use them up. And if it makes a cool painting, great, then we can, you know, maybe sell it. Uh, but if it doesn't make a cool painting, then you know what? It, at least I got to use up the paint before it dried out because with it being so hot out here in the garage, it, uh, you know, these paints dry out really fast and they just don't last very long. So, and they start to get clumps in them and it doesn't matter if it's like the, the acrylic, you know, the acrylic starts to break, break apart. Uh, the gloss enamel that I tend to use, it starts to clump up and dry up and, you know, it just, it, it just becomes kind of a, you know, it's a hassle because since I'm not able to store these paints in a, in a cool temperature controlled environment year round, I kind of have to use them within a few months where they start to go bad. So it is what it is. All right, so I'm gonna grab a few, oh, I'm sorry about that. I kind of moved it a little bit, I apologize. But I'm going to get a couple of these stir sticks. So I've got them for the paint. So what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna pour the paint uh, right onto the paper. And let's see if we can get this off here. Now, if you haven't seen any of my other videos before, the, the paint that I generally use is gloss enamel. It's just a high gloss house paint, essentially. Um, you can't really see it on there because there, it's covered in paint. I'm trying to find it. Uh, like it says right here, high gloss enamel. So that is the type of paint that I generally use for most of my paintings, although I do use acrylic from time to time uh, for smaller paintings uh, or for some of the scrape paintings and stuff like that. So let's crack this open. This is one of my favorite colors, this red. It's called Hot Jazz. Um, and it just, it's just an amazing red. It's a beautiful color. I've come to really, really like and admire. And we've got, you know, uh, we've got a kind of a opaque yellow here. Uh, stir that a little bit. <clears throat> and then we'll stir our other two. We've got this uh, almost like a Halloween orange, fall kind of orange, really really bright orange. I think it's a like citrus notes or something like that is what it's called. Uh, then we've got this kind of a, I don't know, not quite a navy blue, but like a pastel blue. And pop that bad boy off. We'll give that a stir here. And you can kind of see the difference in like when they sit, this one's kind of runny 
I think this one I actually had added. No, I didn't mark it. So generally, if I if I tend to add water, oh, it looks like something got in there. I'll wipe that off. Uh, generally, I'll add a little bit of water sometimes if they start to thicken up. Um, you know, just so that I can kind of still use them. But I don't think they did. It's just. But some of these, what's interesting is that, so some of these gloss enamel paints, uh, because it's basically house paint, some of the colors are actually thicker than others. So even when I buy the paint, some of them get a better coverage than others. Like white paint is actually thicker than black paint. So if I covered something, the white would actually cover it better than the black paint because it's uh, it's just thicker. I don't know what it is. I think it's the pigments they that they use or the filler or something. I'm not I'm not 100% sure. But like this orange, you can see that it it's kind of clumpy, so it it's not very smooth like that blue. But this red is, and the yellow is actually a little bit thicker. So we're actually going to add a little bit of water to this orange. I think that that's actually empty. So just spray it. Get a little bit of water in there. Just to give it a little bit of kind of movement. Give it a good stir to really get that color in there. So I'm gonna pull. Oops, sorry. I'm gonna pull out a little bit so you can see the colors if you can. I apologize. And that's a little better. Okay, cool. So now what we're gonna do here is we're going to put our colors on in little patches. So we'll do orange here. And we'll do some orange here. We'll do a little bit there. Do some there. And this way, you know, we've got the color, we've got some dispersal here. And we'll do some red. We'll do a, kind of a big patch of red here. And just a little bit, maybe throughout the painting itself. Then we'll do some yellow. We'll do yellow here. 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 We'll do some blue. And we want to make sure that we've got enough paint to cover the whole uh, paper because once we crush them, it's uh, it's not actually going to spread the paint as much as you would think it would. So we got to make sure that we cover as much of the paper as possible. So we'll do a lot of purple right there. Do a lot of purple right there. Do some purple right there. All right, so now looking at the gaps, we do have some gaps. So we'll do a little bit more yellow there and there. And then we'll kind of fill in some red here, 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 and here. And that's it. So now we take our second, uh, you know, source, whatever you want to call it, and we put it on top. So we're going to set this down. It's going to obviously push the paint. You know, once we set it down, it's going to kind of push the paint. So we're going to push in. It's going to ooze out the sides, but that's okay. That's kind of what we want because we want the uh, the paint to to move so that it fills the whole painting. So we're gonna kind of push down on it here. hope that the middle of the painting got some paint. We'll just kind of push down on the whole thing. All right, and then the moment of the truth. So we'll go ahead and, oh, I can already see that there's some 
white spots on the paper here. So I'm gonna slide that over. We're actually, we'll go over it one more time just to see if we can kind of push the paper or the paint around if there's some gaps here in the painting. All right, so now we'll go ahead and uh, we'll pull it off. And there it is. So I'm gonna set this down. Give me a second here. It did have some empty spots. So I'm just gonna fill those in real quick. And I think we're good otherwise. Okay. So you can see the piece here. Now there is a little bit of blank spots right there. So now we'll just fill in that. And that's it. So you could leave the painting like this. You honestly could. You could leave the painting kind of like this where it's got like these these waves. Um, honestly, I've found that the paintings actually look cooler if you actually do more little spots of paint as opposed to these large uh, spots of paint, like these big blobs. I've seen some, some cooler ones. In fact, I've got one over there and I'm going to show you guys um, that piece. But I... I'm not 100% happy with the way this painting turned out, okay? So what I'm thinking is that we go ahead and turn it into one of my, I wouldn't say famous dabbed paintings, but you know what? We'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and make a dab painting out of it. So we're gonna take some of this excess paint and we're gonna move it around. So we're going to take these colors and we're going to mix them. And we're just going to kind of make this into something different. Because for me that was a little boring and I don't hate it or anything, but you know it's not it's just not that exciting. To me you know, I, I really like paintings with a lot of movement. That's kind of like why I like Jackson Pollock's work because Jackson Pollock's paintings you know, are so, so dynamic, so vibrant, and that just really appeals to me. And so if I can make, a, you know, a really dynamic painting as opposed to something kind of boring, uh, then I want to do that. So we're going to go ahead and move some of this paint around. some of these darker spots and I think we're good I'll probably just pull some of that paint out real quick just so that it's not pooling because there is a little bit of liquid you know still a lot of liquid paint on there and that's it all right so now actually let's Okay, good. I, I'm happy with that. All right. So now we've got a completely different painting. So we're going to go ahead and pull this tape so you guys can see what the final product looks like. And this is why I really enjoy doing these, these dabbed paintings with, you know, the corrugated plastic. Because it really makes these paintings that are just very dynamic. And I think, you know, I, I kind of stumbled on that method a while back. And ever since I've been really excited because it, it just makes these really movement oriented pieces. And I should probably have not tried to take off all this tape at once because it just wants to pull up this thing. But if the tape drops, it'll actually probably ruin the painting. So I'm gonna put my knee up and pull the paint or the tape down and hope that it doesn't rip the paper because I actually do kind of like this piece. All 
right, so it is ripping a little bit on that side. Let's get it. Okay, we're good. All right. Okay, there. Pull this paper down. Or the tape, sorry. All right. Cool. So... Now that we're done with that, let me get these gloves off. All right, cool. So we've got it, we're done. I'll probably run the heat lamp over it so that the tape or the paint dries. But this is the final piece. I mean, honestly, I, I kind of like it, to be honest with you guys. I'm gonna pull out a little bit, pull the, the angle out a little bit and that's the final piece i mean it's got a lot of vibrancy to it the orange and the purple the yellow the red i actually don't hate the painting and i was just kind of messing around with these colors but they're very very movement oriented you can see kind of the the little waves and the little i don't know flame looking things i guess <laughs> okay so now compare this this is what the dabbed painting looks like compared to just that which is the painting that we pulled off so you can see that it's these crushed paintings are cool but let me show you what i was talking about oh did i put it away here it is okay give me a second guys i'll pull it out for you okay uh there's not a lot of light over there so let's pull it over here okay so I'll just set it here. So this is a painting that I did. Um, and I think I called it They Vanish. And so this painting is like a painting like that, where I took a piece of paper and I put a bunch of paint on it and then I pulled it off and it made these little waves. Now this painting actually is really cool and I like it. And it was just like that, where I just pulled it off. Uh, with a couple of caveats. One, I did a lot of little buckets of, like little pockets of paint and then pulled it off. And two, I pulled it off a lot faster. So it kind of made longer waves because the faster you pull it off, like the longer it makes the little waves. If you pull it off slow, then it's kind of more stagnant, I guess. They're, they're pools. But if you kind of rip it off, not rip it off, but like pull it off faster, then it makes like longer waves. So this one I actually like, but also the colors are pretty good together. So it's another reason why it works but again I uh, this one I'm not I don't hate this painting at all um, I actually kind of like it so you know it is what it is this is kind of stuff that happens but anyway uh, that's it for the video guys I really hope you enjoyed and um, yeah I mean I hope that your your day your week whatever is going well for you and uh, yeah if you've got any questions or comments you know, leave them in the comment section and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care guys. Bye.